bonus episode number four. On to a hairy subject. Interacting with people who do not bring out the best in you. In fact, interacting with people who bring out the worst in you. Hello, my name is Jody Flynn and welcome to Women Taking the Lead, where we are all about creating blasts of inspiration to help you overcome self-doubt so you can lead with confidence, integrity, and a sense of humor. This episode is sponsored by Luma Coaching. Want some support to get your dreams off the ground? Go to womentakingthelead.com forward slash coaching to sign up for a consultation with me. Now, your future awaits, so let's get started. Hey everyone, and welcome to this fourth bonus episode. How has your week gone? I'm going to start off by thanking some of my reviewers, and then I'm going to dive into a topic that's a little dicey and makes me a little uncomfortable. And first, to start off, I'm so appreciative to those of you who've left me a rating and review on iTunes. Each rating and review, each new person who subscribes to the podcast and downloads previous episodes makes the podcast more visible in iTunes and thus easier for those like you to find it. So thank you. I'm so appreciative. I want to share some of the ratings and reviews I've received this past week. And the first one is from John and Lynette. And it says, love the philosophy of the host, love her intention, really looking forward to listening to more episodes. The guests have a great, have great messages and there is so much to gain from their experiences. Subscribed. Yay. Thank you, John and Lynette. And I hope you continue to get as much out of every episode. The next one's from Edie Berg, who is in Israel, and I'm going to have her as a guest on my show soon, which I'm really excited about. And she said, I love listening to this podcast. Every new episode as it comes out, Jody really knows how to listen to people and get the most out of them. This podcast is time really well spent. Enjoy. And I'm really glad you've been enjoying it, Edie, and I can't wait to talk to you. And the last one's from Thorn P, and he's from Wales. Love the show. Stumbled across it after listening to the Kate Erickson episode. Well made, great host, and exciting guests. What more could you ask for? Indeed, Thorne, what more could you ask for? And if you haven't already, I would be honored if you would go to iTunes and leave a rating and review. And next week, I'll give you a shout out. Um, to you and to any organization you own, run, or support. Just include your name if your iTunes name is different from your own and the name of your organization you want to promote and at the at the end of your review, and you'll be hearing from me in the next episode. And if you've already left a review, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, on to a hairy subject. Interacting with people who do not bring out the best in you. In fact, interacting with people who bring out the worst in you. I'm on this topic because I've had a personal experience with this recently. So has a close friend of mine. And then when I was facilitating my local mastermind group, several of the members shared that this was something that they were dealing with as well. So whenever I see a trend, it's a red flag that this is a topic worth discussing. In my own experience, um, the person in my life is someone in my immediate family who I have had a turbulent relationship with most of my life. And let me be clear, I am 100% responsible for my end of the relationship. It always takes two. And yes, this person knows my triggers and my buttons, and they go for them when the opportunity presents itself. But I do the same thing in annoyance and defensiveness, so I know the same is true for them. I don't like the person I become when I'm interacting with this person and I feel guilty for the things I say and do when I'm around them. I almost can't recognize myself. It's like a different version of me. It's it's my um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde moment. And for me, the answer is easy. I don't trust myself at this point to stay calm and rational when what I refer to as venom is being thrown at me. You know, when I'm being accused of not taking responsibility and not asking for forgiveness for things that are out of my control, I lose my cool and I lose it. And then I feel deep shame 
it pours over me and it makes me go hot and cold simultaneously. And from my experience thus far, there isn't anything I can say or do to make things right because ultimately the biggest hurt I'm causing this person is my lack of interest in having a close relationship. Even if I could atone for everything I've said or done, this would always be an area of conflict between us, and I don't have an apology for that. This is something I do for myself because I care for my well-being. And so after this last interaction, I sent a handwritten letter because I couldn't trust myself and I knew a conversation would go nowhere. So I sent the letter to take responsibility for what I could, to list out where I felt I was being treated unfairly, and to reinforce that I felt it was the best for us to love each other from a distance. And what I've also learned from those who cannot keep a distance between themselves and that person in their life that drains them or brings out a person they don't really like in themselves is how important it is to set any boundaries you can and to take really good care of yourself, right? Forgive yourself, forgive them, and forgive yourself again. And one of the biggest blessings I had in this recent situation was I was in the middle of listening to Brene Brown's audio of The Power of Vulnerability. And with her guidance, she didn't know she was giving it to me, but it was right there for me. I was able to see that we're all flawed and that's okay. What's important is to be kind to yourself, to strive to do better, and to talk with those you trust about your shame experience. And that's what I did, and it was incredibly freeing. And if you have a relationship like this in your life, do the same for yourself. Set boundaries where you can. Forgive yourself forgive the other person and talk with somebody in your life who has earned your trust about your experience and do something nice, something self-affirming for yourself. Okay, that's it for now. Um, I would love your feedback. Um, any insights you have on dealing with people, I can, I, you know, call them toxic people in your life. Like really they're not toxic. It's, it's the relationship itself. It's the interactions that are toxic. You know, we're all good people trying to, you know, do our best. And sometimes we fall down and there are some people we fall down with time and time again. So if you have any insights to share, or if you just want to relate um, shoot me an email. I'm at Jody at women taking the lead.com. I would love to hear from you. And if there are any topics, um, in particular that you would like me to cover, you can also shoot me an email or a message through the website or any social media platform that you and I share together. I'm just a click away. All right. Have a great week and here's to your success. Thank you for joining me on Women Taking the Lead. Were you inspired to take some action today, but maybe don't know where to start? Or maybe you have so many great ideas, you can't decide where to focus your attention. Don't let stress or overwhelm stop you from having the career, the business, or the life you want to live. Head over to womentakingthelead.com forward slash coaching, or use the short link womentl.com forward slash coaching to sign up for a consultation with me. And to strengthen you on your leadership journey, I'd like to send you off with a quote from Marianne Williamson, so here goes. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Again, thank you for joining me and here's to your success.